The US would come to Taiwan's aid if China attacked. That's the most common scenario for the wargame simulation. For the last decades, China has been rising and making it clear that Taiwan should undoubtedly be its territory. At the same time, it is seductive to ask, could the US conquer China on its own? More and more governments are looking to war as an effective way to resolve long-standing conflicts, and tensions between the US and China are rising from time to time. Let's start with analyzing the nuclear arsenal. In accordance with the March 2023 New START declaration, the United States possesses 1,419 strategic nuclear warheads that are distributed across 662 strategic delivery systems, including intercontinental ballistic missiles, submarine-launched ballistic missiles, and heavy bombers. In accordance with the New START Treaty, the United States and the Russian Federation are required to conduct semi-annual exchanges of information regarding treaty-accountable items. Additionally, the United States maintains an approximate inventory of 100 B-61 nuclear gravity bombs, which are forward deployed at six NATO bases located in five European countries. These bases include Aviano and Gedi in Italy, Buchel in Germany, Ginchirlik in Turkey, Kleiner Brogel in Belgium, and Volkel in the Netherlands. On October 5, 2021, the US State Department released a declassification announcement revealing that the total count of both active and inactive US warheads stood at 3,750 as of September 2020. It's worth noting that these figures exclude retired warheads and those awaiting dismantlement. According to the Federation of American Scientists FAS, the current military stockpile is estimated to consist of 3,708 warheads with an additional 1,536 retired warheads awaiting dismantlement. Consequently, the total number of warheads as of early 2023 is estimated to be 5,244. Big number, right? Actually, this figure signifies a huge decrease in the stockpile compared to its peak of 31,255 at the conclusion of the 1967 fiscal year. What about the Chinese nuclear arsenal? Managing the count of nuclear warheads in China poses greater challenges. Over the past few decades, China has consistently modernized its nuclear capabilities, with a significant expansion in both the number and variety of weapons deployed in recent years. As of November 2022, the Defense Department's assessment suggests that China might possess as many as 1,000 deployable nuclear warheads by the year 2030. According to independent researchers, China could now have approximately 410 operational warheads ready for deployment across 218 strategic delivery systems, including intercontinental ballistic missiles, submarine-launched ballistic missiles, and nuclear-capable bombers. China is currently in the process of constructing a new generation of submarines equipped for carrying nuclear warheads, with the utilization of Russian technology playing a significant role in their development. The incorporation of Russian technology is expected to enhance the submarine's stealth capabilities, making them considerably more challenging to detect and track. A study conducted by the China Institute of Maritime Studies at the U.S. Naval War College has underscored the potentially profound implications of these upgraded Chinese submarines for the United States and its allies in the Indian Ocean. Analysts and defense experts suggest that the creation of these advanced Type 096 nuclear submarines may be finalized by the end of this decade. Christopher Carlson, a naval intelligence analyst, has described the new 096 submarines as a nightmare due to their anticipated extreme difficulty in detection. So what would a nuclear war between these two countries look like? Forecasting the scenarios of a nuclear war between the US and China shows that in the absence of the decisive influence of other factors, there would be no winners in such a battle. The exchange of even a dozen nuclear strikes would have a huge impact on international security and the ecology of the affected territories. Hundreds of thousands of people would die. The fact that nuclear weapons are used would lead to increased escalation and retaliation, and the spiral of violence and death will only grow. The use of hundreds of warheads would cause the destruction of the foundations of the existence of the modern world, its economy and nature. If the US and China decide to use all their nuclear warheads, the result would be sub-zero temperatures within a few years, and most of the planet's population would die of starvation or disease. That is why most experts avoid the prospect of using nuclear weapons during such a conflict. At the same time, there are opinions that China may be able to use it if it feels it poses a significant threat to its own security. During war, the leaders do not always think rationally. In general, the USA has the second largest nuclear arsenal in the world, 
and China has the third, but the usage would be a loss for both sides. Okay, the mutual destruction by nuclear weapons is obvious, but who is stronger in other types of armed forces? Let's begin with the Air Force. The modern air power of the United States Armed Forces stands unrivaled, boasting a formidable fleet of over 13,000 aircraft across various categories, with over 5,000 of those just in the Air Force. China can only dream about such a number. This comprehensive inventory encompasses combat and direct attack aircraft, alongside a substantial complement of transport planes, aerial refuelers, specialized mission platforms, and training aircraft, including both fixed-wing and rotary-wing models. Through ongoing modernization efforts, select Cold War-era aircraft have been effectively adapted for contemporary battlefield demands. Additionally, the US Air Force has made significant strides in its commitment to next-generation platforms like the F-22 and the F-35. The US Air Force remains unique in its possession of a dedicated bomber fleet capable of conducting conventional and nuclear missions. Furthermore, its Special Mission Force excels in various specialized airborne operations, offering invaluable support to Allied aircraft and ground commanders. The US Navy maintains an expansive carrier force, enabling it to project power and engage adversaries worldwide effectively. Yes, US troops are everywhere in the world. The US Marine Corps boasts an impressive array of aircraft, rivaling and often surpassing the capabilities of top-tier international air services. US Army aviation is anchored by a vast rotorcraft fleet, featuring the AH-64 Apache attack helicopter and the UH-60 Black Hawk as prominent examples. A breakdown of the US Air Force's composition reveals that nearly 25% are combat direct attack aircraft, close to 40% are rotorcraft helicopters, 7.4% constitute the transport fleet, 18.4% are dedicated to training, and 9.4% serve in special missions and other roles. The most popular models are Boeing AH-64 Apaches 808, Lockheed F-16 Fighting Falcons 775, Sikorsky SH-60 Seahawks 508, Northrop T-38 Talon 497, Raytheon T-6 Texan IIs 445, Boeing CH-47 Chinook 394, Boeing KC-135 Stratotanker 388, Airbus UH-72 Lakota 367, Lockheed F-35 Lightning II 310. Discussing the future strategy of the United States Air Force is a crucial and high-stakes topic. The 2022 National Defense Strategy underscores the importance of deterrence through denial, urging the Department of Defense to explore asymmetric approaches and enhance its posture of denial to discourage potential aggression, particularly in scenarios where adversaries might attempt swift territorial acquisition. The debate at hand within the broader discussion centers on how to implement this approach, with two prevailing schools of thought. The first school of thought emphasizes the significance of air superiority and the capability to overcome China's air force as vital elements in achieving effective deterrence. The second line of thought advocates a defensive strategy. Let's take a look at the Chinese Air Force next and see how they compare to the US. Upon closer examination, Chinese air power reveals a predominant reliance on a copy-and-paste approach for many of its frontline combat assets. Comprising a total of 3,044 units, or only a little over half of the US Air Force's 5,000 aircraft. These Chinese entries predominantly originate from Soviet, Russian, French, Israeli, or American sources, with few genuinely domestically developed products to highlight. Although their overall quality and battlefield effectiveness remain largely unproven, the Chinese military can boast significant quantities to deploy in the event of a full-scale conflict. The foundation of modern Chinese air power is primarily attributed to contributions from the former Soviet Union modern Russia, and more recently, France. A breakdown of the Chinese Air Force's composition reveals that 47.5% are combat direct attack aircraft, almost 40% are rotorcraft helicopters, 8.8% constitute the transport fleet, 12.3% are dedicated to training, and 3.4% serve in special missions and other roles. The most popular models are Chengdu J7 Fishcan 387, Shenyang J11 Flanker L 315, Milhai 17, HIP 242, Chengdu J10 Firebird 235, Harbin Z9 175, Hongdu JL8 170, Zhan H6 120, Chang Z10 106. As you can see, it's not so impressive compared to the US. 
does this mean the US would ultimately beat China in an aerial battle? In the event of a conflict, the foremost objective of the US Air Force would be to wrest air superiority from China. Simultaneously, it is essential to weaken Chinese forces by employing precision strikes from a considerable distance. When the pivotal moment arises, the Air Force can execute a sudden, forceful shift to offensive air superiority, akin to wielding a swift and decisive retribution. To attain air superiority, American forces will need to target China's robust, integrated air defense systems, including critical assets within the mainland such as air bases, radar installations, air defense assets, and potentially command and control centers. Conversely, China's primary aim is to maintain control over its airspace. Their strategy centers on denying access to their airspace to limit the US's capacity to achieve and utilize air superiority for offensive military operations. This approach allows for resource preservation by employing a substantial quantity of smaller, cost-effective weapons distributed across various locations. The defender of airspace aims to endure the initial air and missile strikes from the adversary and subsequently contest control over the airspace. Conversely, the attacker seeking air superiority against modern air defense systems must overcome multiple layers of defense across various ranges and altitudes. The advantage clearly lies with the defending side. Attempting to breach heavily fortified Chinese airspace would likely result in significant losses. If a US endeavor to secure air superiority and swiftly defeat Chinese invasion forces proves unsuccessful, it could lead to a catastrophic defeat that jeopardizes the Air Force's ability to sustain a defensive war of attrition. These factors collectively erode deterrence. China deploys a mix of Russian-manufactured and domestically produced air defense systems, with the capability to track and engage enemy aircraft. The technological sophistication of these weapons, coupled with their potential for upgrades, presents significant challenges for the United States in its quest for air superiority in a large-scale engagement. China's air defense arsenal includes the formidable Russian-built S-300 and S-400 surface-to-air missile systems, renowned for their effectiveness worldwide. These systems can undergo upgrades to enhance their capabilities further. The latest iterations of the S-400 and upcoming Russian S-500 missiles are interconnected thanks to high-speed computer processing that enables precise, long-range threat detection. These systems offer extended range and heightened sensitivity compared to their predecessors. However, it's important to note that the ability to detect the presence of an aircraft in the sky doesn't guarantee continuous tracking or successful engagement of the aircraft. China's air defense threat extends beyond Russia's built systems, as the People's Liberation Army Air Force complements them with domestically developed systems. China operates its indigenous HQ-9 surface-to-air missiles and is actively working on the HQ-19 missile systems, designed to counter ballistic missile warheads. As a result, any potential aerial assault over mainland China would likely require aircraft to operate at higher altitudes to avoid detection by air defense. Alternatively, unmanned systems could be employed for target reconnaissance, or long-range ballistic and cruise missiles fired from land or sea platforms could be utilized to neutralize Chinese air defenses from safer standoff distances, minimizing the exposure of manned aircraft to enemy fire. So the US is unlikely to be able to achieve control over the air by conventional means due to China's advanced air defense system. It would just be too expensive. The losses would be huge, and it's not a fact that the USA would be ready to take them. Upon scrutinizing the Russian-Ukraine conflict, military experts from various nations recognize the escalating significance of drones in future warfare. The United States is progressively incorporating more drones into its strategic planning, the objective is to compel China to expend costly missiles to eliminate a plethora of inexpensive and readily available UAVs. Drones are poised to enhance reconnaissance capabilities, neutralize air defense systems, target naval vessels, and deplete enemy resources more effectively. Concurrently, China is actively advancing its drone programs and scaling up production efforts. In alignment with this trend, a new strategy within the US Air Force proposes a pivotal role for drones, operating in coordination with fighter aircraft. The US Space Force envisions drones not as independent combat units but as integral components of the Air Force's Collaborative Combat Aircraft Initiative. In this concept, a manned fighter is accompanied by an AI-equipped and armed drone, designed to be cost-effective and capable of autonomous and paired operations. The outcome of a potential drone confrontation between the United States and China remains uncertain, 
but these unmanned systems possess the potential to yield significant advantages and disadvantages for both sides. And what about the trial weapon, Army Ground Forces? US Ground Forces are undergoing a comprehensive modernization effort to align with the demands of contemporary warfare, moving away from Cold War-era doctrines toward a more agile and mobile fighting force. The US Army's composition comprises 416,504 units, categorized into various types, 361,127 utility and engineering vehicles, 44,124 infantry fighting vehicles, 4,657 combat tanks, 3,000 air defense units, 2,322 artillery SP, and 1,267 artillery towed. At the forefront of advancing ground forces is the M1 Abrams main battle tank, MBT, renowned as one of the heaviest modern tanks. Weighing between 57 and 61 tons, the Abrams is equipped with multi-layer composite armor, which incorporates depleted uranium for its high-density properties and operates on gas turbine engines running on jet fuel. Because of this, of course, the speed of the vehicle suffers, a little more than 41 miles per hour. This American tank has been in service with the US Army since 1980. The latest iteration, the M1A2 SEP variant, features advanced computerization, thermal imaging, and GPS systems for remote weapon control. The Abrams tank has played pivotal roles in conflicts such as Operation Desert Storm, Enduring Freedom, and Iraqi Freedom. Multiple Abrams tank modifications exist to meet diverse operational needs. Additionally, the M2 Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle IFV, is a staple in the US military's inventory. This American-tracked IFV, produced by BAE Systems Land and Armaments, features a conventional IFV layout, with the engine transmission compartment at the front and the infantry compartment in the rear hull. Its crew comprises a commander, gunner, and mechanic driver, and the BMP is capable of carrying up to seven paratroopers. The M2 Bradley boasts an aluminium body and laminated armor, providing protection against 0.57-inch caliber bullets. It is armed with a 0.98-inch M242 automatic cannon and two BGM-71 TAU launchers, which demonstrated its prowess in countering Soviet tanks during the Persian Gulf War. An essential addition to the US military is the Striker, which has expanded its presence due to its versatility across a range of battlefield roles. General Dynamics Land Systems manufactures the Striker Armored Combat Vehicle, which has been in service since 2002, with 350 horsepower the Striker achieves a range of 329 miles and a speed of 38.5 miles an hour. It can accommodate two crew members and nine passengers, with the driver being able to switch between 8x4 on-road and 8x8 off-road modes. Various weapon systems can be mounted on the Striker, such as the 12.7 M2 Browning machine gun or the Mark 19 grenade launcher. Moreover, the Striker is equipped with a V-shaped bottom and Mexus modular composite armor capable of withstanding 12.7 caliber bullets. The US military is also incorporating an expanding fleet of wheeled vehicles, drawing from experiences in urban warfare in Afghanistan and Iraq. As we can see, the US has significant forces. But what about China? In the historical context, the Chinese land forces have traditionally relied on the Soviet Union and later Russia as their primary sources for military hardware, with recent diversification including Western support, notably from France. An increasingly noteworthy trend is the development of indigenous Chinese solutions to meet local requirements across a spectrum of categories, including main battle tanks, armored fighting vehicles, artillery systems, multiple rocket launchers, and security vehicles. In total, the Chinese land forces maintain and operate a substantial fleet of nearly 200,000 armored and unarmored vehicles, alongside a considerable artillery force. Solidifying their position among the world's top four land forces, this inventory encompasses 121,300 utility and engineering vehicles, 17,020 armored fighting vehicles, 5,015 combat tanks, and 4,591 artillery pieces. The Type 96, initially designed as the Type 88C, represents a key component of the People's Liberation Army's tank forces and was a main battle tank introduced into service in 1997. Its development commenced shortly after the conclusion of the Gulf War in 1991. The Type 96 marked a milestone as the first Chinese tank equipped with a 4.92 inches smoothbore gun and automatic loader. The tank features a forced liquid-cooled diesel engine generating 1,000 horsepower facilitating a maximum speed of 40 miles per hour 
Its main gun is an unlicensed copy of the Russian 2A46M, boasting a barrel length of 48 calibers. The ammunition capacity stands at 42 rounds, with 22 of these stored in an automatic loader mechanism akin to the T-72 design. The PLA ground force is extensively mechanized, equipped with a variety of armored platforms, advanced electronic warfare capabilities, concentrated firepower, and modern weapon systems that hold their own against their Western counterparts. But machines of war are nothing without people. So let's talk about the manpower of armies next. The United States has a population of 337,341,954, with a manpower pool of 148,430,460 individuals. The total number of military personnel is 1,832,000 comprising 1,390,000 in active military service and 442,000 in reserve. The US military enforces a stringent selection process for candidates. Despite its rigor, it serves as the largest employer, providing soldiers with competitive salaries and comprehensive benefits. Eligible Americans can begin their military service at the age of 17, with an age limit of 42. Upon successful testing and evaluation, candidates sign contracts ranging from two to six years. Strict physical fitness requirements, assessed through the Army Physical Fitness Test APFT, are pivotal during the candidate selection process. This test includes 35 push-ups, 50 abdominal exercises in two minutes, and a two-mile cross-country run within 16.5 minutes. This test is mandatory not only for recruits but also for active military personnel, who must take the APFT every two years. The standards may slightly vary with age, and individuals in excellent physical condition are subject to specific criteria, which are outlined in a separate document. For instance, a man with a height of 5.58 feet should not exceed a maximum weight of 180 pounds, and for women of the same height the limit is 161 pounds. Moreover, all candidates must undergo a mandatory background check to ensure a clean legal history, maintain a strong credit record, and have no visible tattoos. China, with its vast population of 1 billion people, boasts one of the world's largest standing armies, totaling around 3.1 million personnel across standard service branches – Army, Navy, and Air Force. This includes over 2 million active personnel, constituting over 60% of the available manpower. In the event of conflict, China's substantial population provides a deep pool of potential recruits, enabling a strategy of attrition warfare through sheer numerical strength. The Chinese military utilizes a range of small arms such as pistols, submachine guns, rifles, sniper rifles, machine guns, and mortars, in addition to portable battlefield solutions, including anti-aircraft and anti-tank missile systems. The People's Liberation Army sets specific requirements for aspiring recruits. Chinese military leaders emphasize the importance of maintaining an image of the most experienced and disciplined armed forces. Obese military personnel may face limitations on career progression, motivating constant physical improvement. The Chinese military promotes physical fitness through numerous competitions among its ranks. An intriguing restriction introduced in 2006 bans individuals who snore consistently from joining China's military academies as it's believed that such snoring can disrupt the daily activities of other cadets and hinder their military training. Clearly, these vast armies are not simply transported and deployed on land without careful planning. Aviation and the Navy play a crucial role in facilitating the arrival and landing of tens of thousands of troops and equipment. Therefore, let's examine the critical component for such operations, the naval fleets. The US Navy's carrier fleet sets it apart significantly from its regional rivals. At the forefront are 10 nuclear-powered carriers from the Nimitz class, which, while rooted in Cold War concepts and technologies, have led the service to invest heavily in the new Gerald R. Ford class, promising to enhance US naval capabilities. Currently, only one of these supercarriers is in active service. Additionally, the carrier force is supplemented by straight-deck amphibious assault ships, primarily designed for rotorcraft operations, but also capable of supporting fixed-wing strike aircraft like the AV-8B and advanced F-35 VTOL aircraft. The attack submarine fleet consists of all nuclear submarines, including remnants of the Cold War era like the Los Angeles, Ohio, and Seawolf classes, as well as the more modern Virginia-class boats, which are gradually replacing the older Los Angeles vessels. The guided missile cruiser fleet, also a product of the Cold War period, is slated for reinvestment with the introduction of a modern frigate design, 
as the current destroyer-heavy fleet lacks such vessels. The US Navy maintains a functional mine and countermine force, patrol vessels, and the historic three-masted USS Constitution, the oldest active ship afloat. The Navy also operates various support ships that streamline a wide range of naval operations. So how does China fare in this category? The People's Liberation Army Navy PLAN, has made significant advancements over the past few decades, enhancing its surface and undersea vessel capabilities and bolstering support ships. Now it's as close to US capabilities as ever before. An essential component of its power projection strategy, both regionally and globally, is the growing strength of its fixed-wing carrier fleet, currently consisting of two carriers. This force will soon be augmented by two indigenous designs, offering improved capabilities for blue water environments. The submarine fleet, which includes over 70 boats from multiple classes, still has some life left in it, with only a few beginning to show signs of aging. The destroyer fleet is relatively young, with some of the oldest units not yet reaching 30 years in service. Similarly, the frigate fleet is youthful, with a few exceptions, and currently includes only 40 vessels. The PLAN places a particular emphasis on its corvette strength, boasting around 70 modern vessels in this category. The mine countermine fleet consisting of eight units is relatively old, with the youngest being 27. The offshore strength hulls are also approaching a critical stage in their service lives, with the 10 vessels being over 25 years old. The amphibious assault force has seen a revival with the introduction of modern players designed for helicopters and transport operations from ship to shore. Additionally, 24 vessels are on order, strengthening the fleet in the carrier, submarine, destroyer, and landing helicopter dock categories. Overall, the PLAN has made significant progress in enhancing its naval capabilities. Its ultimate goal is to one day challenge the United States as the world's preeminent naval power. So which navy would win? At present, the United States regards the Chinese Navy as a formidable force, capable of contesting American naval dominance in the Western Pacific Ocean during a military conflict. This marks the primary strategic challenge for the US military since the end of the Cold War. It's worth noting that this is a pivotal moment in the contemporary era of global geopolitical competition. Throughout history, naval arms races and fleet rivalries have consistently foreshadowed shifts in global leadership. The competition between the United States and China in military capabilities, particularly with their respective navies, is just one facet of the broader strategic rivalry encompassing political, diplomatic, economic, technological, and ideological dimensions. The US sees the Chinese Navy as a critical component of China's efforts to challenge the United States, the primary military power in the Pacific. Over the past 25 years, China has been actively modernizing and expanding its naval capabilities. US observers have expressed concerns and, in some cases, raised alarms about the pace of growth and development in Chinese naval shipbuilding. They scrutinize the evolving capabilities of the Chinese Navy in comparison to the US Navy and conclude that the United States is gradually losing its edge. China's naval modernization encompasses a broad spectrum of initiatives, including the introduction of new ships, aircraft and weapons, enhancement in maintenance and logistics, the development of naval doctrine, improvements in fleet personnel quality, education and training of naval personnel, and extensive exercises. American experts have identified certain areas of weakness within the Chinese Navy, including limited compatibility with other branches of the PLA forces, anti-submarine defense capabilities, long-range maritime operations, limited supply capabilities at sea, a restricted number of overseas bases, and challenges in training a substantial number of new sailors for the crews of the new ships particularly in the absence of relative combat experience. Chinese naval personnel are aware of these limitations and actively strive to address them. The Chinese Navy has substantial reserves beyond its primary structure, with the Chinese Coast Guard being the largest in East Asia. This force functions as the rear or coastal component of the Navy, and under a centralized mobilization system, integrates a significant number of civilian fishing vessels. In assessing the two competing navies, it's important to consider the difference in ship types. The US Navy has a greater number of heavy ships, including aircraft carriers, guided missile cruisers, and destroyers, while the Chinese Navy possesses more light ships, such as frigates and corvettes armed with guided missiles. Additionally, US surface warships are equipped with an extensive 9,000 vertical launch missile launchers, whereas the Chinese Navy has approximately 1,000. American warships are technologically advanced. All US aircraft carriers are nuclear-powered, 
while the first three Chinese aircraft carriers utilize conventional propulsion. All American submarines are nuclear-powered, while most Chinese submarines use diesel propulsion. The majority of Chinese submarines are best suited for coastal operations rather than extended ocean voyages. Anti-ship ballistic missiles are a key asset in China's naval capabilities in a potential conflict with the US. The Chinese missile forces are armed with two types of medium-range anti-ship ballistic missiles, the DF-21D, with a range exceeding 932 miles, and the DF-26, with a maximum range of approximately 2,485 miles. Both systems are deployed on specialized mobile launchers. Moving on, which one of these countries has the upper hand when it comes to strategic positioning? In a hypothetical scenario where the United States attempts to conquer China independently, geographical factors come to the forefront as crucial determinants of the conflict's outcome. The longer the duration of the war, the more apparent China's geographical advantages become. China's vast land border, spanning 13,954 miles with neighboring countries, poses a significant challenge to potential U.S. efforts to enforce an economic maritime blockade. This extensive border nullifies attempts to cut off maritime access effectively. Furthermore, China boasts the world's longest navigable waterways, totaling 68,350 miles. These waterways provide rapid mobility for various goods and military forces when conventional transportation infrastructure, such as roads and railways, fall short. In times of war, they serve as crucial routes for the movement of personnel, equipment, and supplies to critical areas. Conversely, the United States faces a considerable geographical distance from China. It's like half of the world. That would stretch its supply chains significantly, seriously impacting the dynamics of the conflict. Nonetheless, one favorable factor for a potential invasion is China's lengthy coastline extending over 9,000 miles. A lengthy coastline necessitates a substantial commitment to homeland defense, as it provides open access to deep water sources. Many nations have, therefore, developed specialized coastal patrol craft and amphibious assault forces to mitigate concentrated sea-based attacks. A lengthy coastline requires dedicated defenses, which could potentially offer the US an advantage in terms of operational flexibility. Additionally, the concentration of most of China's human and material resources near the coastline could be advantageous for the US during the initial phases of an invasion. Thus, at the beginning of the war, the geography of China will be its disadvantage, which will eventually become a tangible advantage in the event of protracted attempts to conquer it. To comprehensively analyze this scenario, it's essential to delve deeper into the economic aspects as well. The United States, once the world's largest trading nation and a primary bilateral creditor, has seen a shift in global dynamics. Presently, nearly 100 nations consider China their foremost trading partner, while the United States maintains such a relationship with only 57 countries. China's influence has grown over the past decade, marked by a substantial commitment of $1 trillion to infrastructure projects through its Belt and Road Initiative, whereas US aid contributions have diminished. The United States wields remarkable financial clout through its extensive transnational financial institutions and the global prominence of the US dollar. The majority of foreign exchange reserves are held in dollars, with only a small portion denominated in yuan. The US remains a front-runner in the development of pivotal technologies, including bio, nano, and information technologies, that will be pivotal in this century's economic growth, although China has been making substantial efforts to establish formidable competition. Furthermore, the United States enjoys an advantageous position in terms of energy resources. Over the past decade, the shale revolution has transformed China into a net energy exporter, while China's reliance on energy imports has increased. Maintaining access to global resources during a conflict would be a significant advantage for the US, while China may require time to diversify its supply sources. Nevertheless, relying excessively on allies during a prolonged war could be a risky proposition. The cost of materials in the US National Defense Reserve has significantly decreased since 1952 by over 95%. In contrast, China's strategic reserves hold a considerably larger quantity of critical mineral resources. For example, China's strategic stockpiles contain approximately 7,000 metric tons of cobalt, whereas the US National Defense Reserves holds just over 300 metric tons, down significantly from more than 24,000 in 1990. This may lead to an underestimation of the critical mineral reserves required for stockpiling. 
considering the potential duration of a US-China conflict. In the context of a short and intense war, the emphasis would likely be on replenishing ammunition, as constructing and deploying new platforms would be impractical before hostilities began. The ability to replenish resources, as demonstrated in the Russian-Ukraine conflict, holds substantial importance in such scenarios. One significant resource deficiency in China pertains to semiconductors, as the majority of these critical components are either imported or manufactured by foreign suppliers. Semiconductors, often referred to as the oil of the 21st century, serve as the foundational technology in a wide range of devices, including smartphones, satellites, and anti-missile defense systems. The intricate process of advanced chip manufacturing is among the most complex in the manufacturing industry, involving over a thousand production stages and lasting three to four months. That's a long time for a war between such influential states. For Chinese economists, achieving semiconductor self-sufficiency is of paramount importance. China has established substantial investments in the semiconductor industry. However, it lags behind Taiwan by approximately a decade in several crucial areas. China's overarching goal is to establish what is known as a closed loop, where domestic companies would oversee every aspect of the sector, including raw materials, engineering, chip design, manufacturing, and assembly. Conversely, the United States maintains dominance in the semiconductor sector, primarily due to its leadership in research, development, and design. How clever they are! The US has largely outsourced the production of advanced chips, primarily to Taiwan. Over time, the US share of global semiconductor production has decreased significantly, from 37% in 1990 to approximately 12%. In the event of a conflict between the United States and China, Taiwan's specialization in chip manufacturing would exacerbate global challenges. If China refrains from attacking Taiwan, the United States would have a significant advantage by maintaining Taiwan as a crucial ally. If China attacks, it will be another impetus to the world financial crisis that will arise due to the war. It's also important to understand that the US and China are each other's largest trading partners. A war between them would have a huge impact on the economies of both countries and the world. Now it's time to analyze the last important factor in the war – potential allies. Here's another consideration to keep in mind when contemplating a conflict. Who are your allies? Given the current global landscape, the United States faces a challenge in concentrating all its efforts solely on China. Various hotspots around the world and unresolved conflicts necessitate US presence and influence. Resources are also allocated to support the defense capabilities of countries such as Ukraine, NATO member states, Israel, Japan, Taiwan, and others. However, it remains uncertain whether these nations would be inclined to directly engage in a conflict with China and provide military support unless they were directly threatened. Can the US really trust their allies? In contrast, China holds an advantage over its potential adversaries. As many of the US's opponents possess substantial military forces, weaponry, and access to natural resources, a protracted conflict could unpredictably escalate tensions worldwide, draining the resources of the United States and its allies, and potentially expanding into a broader and more extensive conflict. Economically, the US's allies wield significant influence but the global financial crisis that could arise in the wake of a conflict's onset makes it challenging to predict the extent of their support. An intriguing question pertains to whether the United States has allies within China, individuals or groups dissatisfied with China's policies, such as the Uyghurs. The strength of the Chinese system during times of war, the potential for elite collusion, and the possibility of capitulation all remain uncertain. It's also difficult to anticipate the feasibility and consequences of political assassinations of leaders in both the USA and China, and how such events would alter the course of the conflict. Conversely, democratic institutions in the United States have consistently demonstrated resilience. Simultaneously, strong pacifist and isolationist movements within the US can exert pressure on the government to seek an earlier end to the conflict. Therefore, predicting the domestic and global reactions to this conflict is difficult. If, in our theoretical case, the USA would like to conquer China, then time will not play in their favor. So, can the US conquer China on its own? The answer is probably not. Despite the superiority of many types of modern weapons, the USA will not be able to do this on its own. Even in an alliance with other NATO countries, this will be difficult because of the advantages that a defending country receives and the huge resources China has to do so. Do you think this might change in the future? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more military analysis from Military Experts.